I was thinking that maybe when you get back, you could come with me. Fuck work, fall in love right now, and spend all our money. Jump with me. Jump with me. I've been feeling it buzzing on my fingertips. Wanna try it out? Get lost, get lost. Happy Wednesday, everybody! It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Um, I mean, last week uh, was a really good show, but I was incredibly tired. Um, I have to say I'm super tired today as well because um, I've been in London all day. I've been at this huge, um, I'd call it a convention, um, and uh, it's an industry expo for cybersecurity. Um, so I've been there yesterday, uh, today, and I'll be back tomorrow. Um, it's been a huge project launch also uh, for my work. And so as soon as I got home, I wanted to go straight to bed. But I was like, 
this has got to happen. This has got to happen because I know as soon as I get into the show, uh, I start feeling really, really good because I love all your energy. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who is tuned in live right now. And if you are watching it on replay, hello to you as well. I always love seeing you uh, in the comments afterwards. Um, so yeah, um, happy Wednesday, happy summer solstice, which means uh, it is the longest uh, day of the year which also means, unfortunately, that the days are going to start getting darker again. Um, this is Miles Dyer Live, a show where every Wednesday at this time uh, we hang out. It's a bit of a talk show. Uh, we talk about all things from the serious, maybe mental health and well-being, world events, life hacks, and other times we mix it up with some fun. Quizzes, gaming, you name it. But today, today we're going to be talking about Something a bit serious, but actually something I think is just really, really cool. It's something I've been aware of um, for quite a few years now. Um, it was also from a professor from my town's university. So there's a bit of, you know, pride there, you know, feeling proud for something you didn't actually get involved with. But it's always nice to see someone in your vicinity that is doing great stuff in the world. Um, but we will get to that, show your stripes in a little bit. But first, as always, we've got to do a bit of housekeeping after... I say hello to everyone in the chat. So uh, who have we got here? We've got Karina, we've got Mojo, we've got Welsh Boy UK, we've got Kira, we've got Cali Timecat, we've got Siago, we've got we've got Q Creator, we've got Loop of the Underground Game Cat, we've got Salvador, and many more, many, many more. So I want to say hello to all of you. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already, and if you are stumbling across this. Uh, why not subscribe? And uh, Nine Lives the Game Cat is here as well. Hello to you. Um, right, quick bit of housekeeping. So, uh, firstly, I guess I should go through the schedule that I normally go through with the week. Uh, every Wednesday, as you know, uh, it's Miles Dyer Live. Um, and last week we talked all about AI generative um, art, or is it art? Um, it's actually a video that's done very well after the live stream. A lot of people are coming across it, um, getting involved in the discussion. Um, it was a really great piece to look at. So yeah, this time every Wednesday, Miles Dyer Live, which means next week is going to be the 100th episode. And I tell you what, I'm actually really glad I took a week off uh, during my vacation because if the 100th episode was today, I would have just dreaded it because... Um, yeah, being tired from all of the work this week. So next week is the 100th episode. I've got a few little things planned, but if you have ideas of what you think we should be covering or doing on the 100th episode, um, head on over to our Discord, um, Empathy Arcade, which is linked in the description of this video. Join, say hello in the welcome section, and then head right on over to the channel Miles Dyer Live, and I'd love to hear all your ideas. Um, next week's going to be a very special episode. I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, and I hope to see you all there. Even those of you who perhaps don't always get to tune in live, I think this is one that, you know, we should make happen. Get as many people live as possible. That would be really, really good. Um, on Fridays, um, I join my good friend Brian Paul for PSVR Without Parole, uh, where we talk all things virtual reality, PlayStation virtual reality, that is. Um, always a good time. Uh, late here in the UK, um, but that's what we do here. And then at weekends, we do Let's... I say let's play, but it's let's plays now really, isn't it? Because um, I do multiple and last weekend, last weekend, I did not one let's play, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six. I did three on Saturday, three on Sunday. Um, it was full on. It was a good mix of games um, and uh, it felt awesome. It was nice to just dive in and just mix it up because I've set myself the challenge to do a let's play of every single PSVR 2 title. And I've worked out there are about 120 that we know of, as in games that have come out, but also ones that we know are coming down the road. And with about 20 weeks left in the year, it means I need to play on average four and a half games uh, a week. So I'm gonna be doing six every uh, every weekend uh, for the foreseeable future, when when I can. Um, just to help make a dent in that. And we actually have three new PSVR 2 games that came out or are coming out this week, which I'll be playing at the weekend. So um, why don't I show you a little bit about it? Um, on Saturday, we have... <laughs> bloody hell, Miles. 
Uh, on Saturday, we have Masternoid, which Shadow dropped, I think, earlier today or, or yesterday, um, which is a sort of puzzle game. It's like Pong, but with sort of 3D space. Um, and you use a, a gun, and it looks, you know, indie, colourful. Looks like a good time. So that'll be kicking off uh, at 5 p.m. UK time on Saturday. Then two hours later, C Smash VRS. And um, I've played a little bit of this, of the demo, and also of the full game. Um, this is like Pong in VR. It's like Squash meets Pong. Uh, and I'll also be able to play people online. So if you want to play against me, I'll be doing the single player, which is really cool at first, but then I will open it up. I'll probably do quick play, actually, and just see who I get matched up with. Um, but yeah, that'll be a fun time. And then Hubris uh, will be the sci-fi epic that we end Saturday night with. Uh, and Nine Lives says, you love my Riven Planet stream. Yeah, I got very frustrated. If you look at the uh, timestamps on that, you'll see that like the coconut level uh, took about half of the live stream. And if you're wondering, what on earth am I on about? Um, you're just going to have to check it out because uh, it was quite the adventure. And that is just Saturday. So, um, yeah, do hang out. Um, I try and do an hour to an hour and a half of each uh, just so I have some time to relax and recharge my controllers before going on to the next one. But that's just Saturday. Sunday, we'll be playing Runner, uh, kicking things off at 5 p.m. BST, 9 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then two hours later, jumping into the rhythm violent world of Thumper. And then we'll be ending the weekend with a nice trip down to the casino for PokerStars VR, uh, playing. Uh, all sorts. Might even do a bit of poker. How about that? Um, and of course, if you have the game, you might actually want to join me uh, in the game itself. Um, I, I might set up a, a, a special Miles Dyer Live uh, casino uh, for us all to, to hang out in. So that could be fun as well. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of great games um, and barely making a dent in the massive list. Um, so yeah, we have all of that to look forward to as well. Um, my arms are actually really aching at the moment because of Sunday when I played Beat Saber because we did Riven Planet, which was, there was a lot of movement and I did that for about an hour, um, an hour and a half actually maybe. And then I had a break and then when I went to Beat Saber, I did an hour and 40. And for those of you that perhaps don't know what Beat Saber is, um, this clip might show you um, why... My arms are hurting now because this was an hour and a half into the live stream. And you can see my heart rate on screen as well. Here we go, you guys. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah, my arms are still killing from that. Um, it was a game that really helped me through the pandemic. Um, I played about an hour at least every day. And it's really, really good for fitness. It's really good for cardio. And, um, you know, gamification is a, a term that we associate, you know, where you create a gamified um, incentive to, you know, take part in an activity. And sports has always been that. But the reason I love it with Beat Saber is um, that, uh, you know, um, you're in the headset, you're not thinking about, oh, I'm working out right now. You're really pushing to get that score. And uh, yeah, um, I'm definitely aching because of it. Um, Amnesia Pete says, hello once again. Show your stripes, question mark. We will get to that as we get to the main topic of the show, but just a few more things to cover. Um, something that has been missing the last four episodes, but is now back, is... Uh, we have a puzzle that takes place during the show. So if you're someone that, you know, likes to engage but feels like you have to fiddle with something else in the background, we have this. Um, no, we don't. <laughs> Those are my notes. Uh, let me uh, let me do this. Oh, it's not even doing that now. Here we go. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Um, so if you go to the link that is in the, uh, it should be pinned in the comment section or someone else can uh, post, actually I'll post it again just here. Um, if you go here, you don't need to log in to do it. 
Um, it's basically a puzzle of the video thumbnail. And the way it works is you click on a tile and then you click on another one. And if it goes green, it means it's in the right place. If it goes red, it means it was in the right place and you moved it. So like this bit here, look, this is gonna be here, right? Yes, yeah, it went green. But if I move it there, it goes red. Um, so yeah, um, have a go and uh, see how you get on. There were 510 pieces um, and there are 400 left. Um, so some of you are busy, busy, busy. Um, so see if you can complete it before the end of the show. How about that? Um, what else is there to talk about? I don't. I think that's it for housekeeping and uh, all sorts. Um, right. Uh, the uh, <laughs> this game is making all sorts of sounds now. I had it on mute, um, but um, okay. I think it's it's sorted now. Um, Every week we like to talk about something called vitamin G, vitamin gratitude, where we like to take a few moments to reflect on things that we are grateful for in life. And um, for me, um, I'm going to go first while you think about what you want to say uh, and just share as much or as little as you want in the chat. Um, so just thinking about what you're grateful for can be very impactful and good for uh, your 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 well-being and, and mental health um, but for me I am just grateful um, to have such a supportive community that I get to um, share my evenings with every week um, you are all absolutely wonderful and incredibly understanding because the last eight weeks has been so incredibly stressful for me um, work has just been full-on it's been fantastic like I've been really enjoying it it's been really really good fun um, but it's been a, a lot of time away from home filming uh, you know overseeing projects um, I'm launching the project this week and as I said I've been at this event um, in uh, in London it's been pretty full-on uh, hello Kirsty good to see you here welcome 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 um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just grateful for all of you. You've always been incredibly supportive and uh, yeah, it means a lot. So thank you to that. Um, let's have a look. What are you lot grateful for? We've got Mojo who is saying, I'm grateful for a roof over my head. The weather has been crazy recently. So I'm thankful for a solid roof over my head to shield me from the elements. I'll tell you what, um, whenever um, I have my American friends say, does it always rain in England? I've always said, no, but when it does rain, it rains hard. There's flooding and people often get swept away. Um, this week really proved that. We went so many days without rain. And then we had some like thunder and lightning. And I have to say, it was the loudest thunder I have ever heard. Like the biggest bangs. Um, and then just had like f flash floods, it felt like. It just rained so heavy uh, for about an hour, if that. Um I don't think it was even for an hour, but yeah, it's been a lot. And in those moments, yeah, grateful for having a roof over my head indeed. Um, Canic says, I'm grateful for the central air today. The central air. Good, good, good. Uh, <laughs> Siago goes, phone reset itself. Thanks, phone. Can always be grateful for that. Have we got anything else? Have we got anything else? Any other vitamin Gs? Um I will keep. I will. I will keep. Oh, you a little, <laughs> a little jelly. I, I do love. I love storms as well. Um, best feeling is when you you're trying to sleep and it's raining outside and you can just put the cover over your head. Um, it's like camping. I'm not a huge camping fan, but you know, being in a tent when you can hear the rain outside, as long as it's not leaking, uh, it's a real cozy feeling. I like it a lot and it helps me sleep. I mean, I listen to the sounds of rain every night uh, on my phone. Cool. Right. Uh, so not just vitamin G, but we also talk about dire discoveries. So every week I talk about something I found out or discovered. And uh, this one is going to probably appeal to a very, very small uh, portion of you. But I just thought I'd explain something. So this live streaming equipment that I use um, is fantastic. It's called Ecamm. It works for Macs. Um, I have an iMac computer here that I've had since 2017. And then when I do my VR shows in my VR studio living room, I use my MacBook Pro, which I also got in 2017. Thanks uh, a lot to YouTube, because it was at a time I was made their UK ambassador. They gave me some grant money to invest in equipment. Um, but both of them, they do fine, 
but they are starting to struggle and with live streaming especially when it comes to vr i've got two camera feeds and although i think the frame rate is pretty good i think the quality of the streams could be a lot better so i've been doing a lot of research into getting a new apple computer and i'm not going to go into all the details because it'd be it could be a whole episode um but I was just like, I want a new computer here and then something downstairs that I can use as well. And these things cost a lot of money. But speaking with my friend uh, at work today, who is a videographer, um, I realized I've come up with a solution, which is I'm going to get a new MacBook Pro with the M2 chip. And by the way, the reason you want the new Apple Silicon, which is the Apple or M1 or M2 chip, is it means Ecamm, my live streaming app, when I live stream... Um, currently it records every audio feed separately so when I'm streaming VR afterwards if I want to edit video I've got me speaking on camera and then I've also got an audio feed of the game so if there are levels aren't quite right um, I can play them with them about but with Apple Silicon I can also get separate video feeds and that means after I've done a VR stream if I want to create like a, an Instagram reel and move where I am on the green screen, I can do that, which is fantastic. Anyway, the dye discovery I wanted to talk about was um, one of the products I was looking at was a Mac Studio, which is this like computer, small computer, super powerful, and it would sit here nicely, but then I would have to buy uh, a, a screen separately. It doesn't come with a screen. Now, currently on this iMac that I've got, um, it has an amazing monitor, but it's the computer and the monitor, right? And it's called like a 5K Retina display, 27 inch. Um, it's awesome. Um, and um, the separate, uh, and so I, uh, I asked Apple, I said, if I buy this Mac Studio device, can I plug it into this iMac and use it as a monitor? And they said no. And they apologized because the person serving me realized it sounds absurd. But they said, sorry, all the new Apple Silicon computers, they can be plugged into any monitor, but they can't be plugged into a pre-existing Mac that you own, which sounds mad, but it, it, it gets worse. So if I was to trade in this computer that years ago cost me a couple of grand, Apple will give me, I think, 160 pounds for trading. And okay. Um, trading's good because they recycle the parts. But I've got a 5K Retina display screen, 27 inch, which is fantastic. For the Mac Studio on the website, they sell a 5K Retina uh, 27 inch display on its own. And do you know how much it costs? It costs around £1,300. So Apple told me for if I spend, you know, two grand on a new computer that needs a monitor. I can't plug it into this brilliant monitor in front of me. I have to trade this in, get 160 pounds, and then pay 1,300 pounds for the same monitor, except it's just a monitor, whereas what I've currently got is a monitor and a computer. And I just thought, I just feel that's ridiculous. I just feel it's ridiculous. And so, um, yeah, I'm going with, a, with a, a laptop computer. But I just wanted to share that little discovery I made this week. Um, I do love Apple that they're trying to make sure they recycle everything. But I do think they need to give more value. And I even said to them, like, surely if I'm recycling my monitor, which is fantastic, and I basically want it for another, the, the same monitor that I can just plug my new Mac in, uh surely give me more than 160 pounds but they're like computer says no and uh yeah so there is a lot i love about apple but there's also a lot i don't so that's my die discovery my question to you and i would say if you're on discord get into the tech section or general and let me know if anyone has any recommendations on good monitors because i'm sure there are good monitors you can get for far less than um 1300 pounds right <laughs> but anyway that was it. That was it. That was my story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Um, I think it's time for us to get to the main event. Um, I've been a bit all over the place lately, so um, I, I always worry that I'm missing something. Although I have remembered I need to get a button on here that basically zooms in on me because some people have that. You know, when you want effect, you want it to, 
you want the camera to punch in a bit more um, because I wanted to show you this actually this is one of the things I've bought for my 100th episode next week you know what this is bean boozled right caution contains weird and wild flavors and for those of you that don't know what it is basically I'm gonna spin a wheel and it's gonna land on one of these and depending on what it lands on it could be something really nice or something really horrible so you could get like a pink one it's either peach or bath flavored you could get a green one that is is it juicy pear or booger is it buttered popcorn or rotten egg um so <laughs> a lot of people saying oh these are horrible uh-oh uh-oh yeah there's a lot of grossness um, so this is one thing I'm going to be doing next week. If you have ideas what you'd like to see on my 100th episode, do get in touch uh, on the Discord. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts. I'm going to be busy preparing over the next week. Um, but it would just be nice to hang out. Cool. Final look at the puzzle. How are we getting on? 342 pieces left. If you want to give it a go, uh, link is pinned in the uh, chat. Uh, but I've just typed it again now. And also... I've got about 20 of you watching live right now. Do hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, we've only had seven likes and we've had a few people dislike, which is totally fine. It's still engagement. And also, I knew with the topic of this show, you just get some people that are really, really against this topic. And so naturally, um, we'll just... Um, oh, I was getting pages and pages on Twitter from people um, just saying how climate change is a hoax and um, it's disappointing, but not surprising because it is the internet. Um, all right, everyone. So firstly, um, today is Show Your Stripes Day, okay? Has anyone here heard of Show Your Stripes before? I discovered it a few years ago, um, and I think it's a really, really great... Um, <laughs> internet will be internet, yeah. <laughs> internet will be internet. Um, so... Um, Show Your Stripes was created by Professor Ed Hawkins, who's at the University of Reading, Reading being where I'm from. Uh, and they, it basically represents global warming stripes, um, which are a simple visual representation of a long-term rise in global temperatures due to human-caused um, climate change. So what I'll do, actually, is I will bring up this page here so you can have a look. Okay, so um, here we go. Um, so, um, do you know what? I should probably move my, do you know what? I'll, ju I'll just, I'll just hide myself for a moment. Um, so here's the page and everyone can go to this. You just go to show your stripes dot info. Um, and, uh, a lot of people saying, no, they haven't heard of this before. So you go to show your stripes dot info and this is the global one. Okay. And basically each stripe represents the global temperature averaged over one year from 18, 1850 to 2022 or 2023 now. And the red stripes are years that were hotter than the 1971 to 2000 average. So blue stripes are years that were cooler than that. Okay. And so you, you might be saying, okay, I kind of get this. It's kind of cool. But what you can do, and this is something that I recommend everyone doing at the end, and this is the whole point of Show Your Stripes, is um, you click here for your region, and first of all, you choose what region. So you, we can go Europe. So yeah, Europe here. And then you can do your country. So, okay, I'm going to do the United Kingdom. Look at this. Um, uh, and Kira says the scale is not consistent sometimes it goes up to 3 degrees and sometimes only 2 degrees hard to compare like that um, and then you can do like your county and then or, or your town and stuff like that so this is like the stripes of where you're from Okay. so this data ranges from 1863 to 2022 actually it is till 2022 but then you can do labelled stripes. So you go here and it gives you it. So Berkshire is the county that Reading is in. And then you have bars here 
which will also show as well and you can do bars with scale and it'll show you with the with the average temperature and that's it so why 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 is this important why 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 has this been done um you know and why does this matter well to be honest there's a lot of conversation online um around climate change uh, we all know this um but climate change is a pretty big concept um you know for most people we understand it you know we're noticing these super hot summers especially here in the uk last year having a 40 degree centigrade or hitting that and dreading it coming back uh, again this year uh, there are some parts of the world i think of pakistan where i think it was way over 50 degrees centigrade uh, and for my american friends um let's have a look what 50 degrees centigrade is uh in fahrenheit is 122 uh so they've been over 122 degrees fahrenheit in pakistan um and so you know it can be when it comes to having conversations it's about finding things that are interesting and can you know get people's attention towards it so today and i assume it was done today because of the summer solstice but um it's been created to show your stripes um, it's a great conversation starter um, and if any of this sounds a bit too dry um, because look you know scientific data can be overwhelming to some and these visuals make it accessible and easy to understand but check this out if we go to the showcase here are examples of where it's been used so my uh, buddy Raul Reynolds who is in a band called Enter Shikari uh, they performed at Reading Festival, the big rock festival, or it used to be a rock festival, it's just a festival now. They played at Reading Festival um, a few years ago, and uh, actually, let's see what the date was on it. It was in, oh, it was 2021, um, and they had the uh, climate stripes at Reading Festival uh, in the background. I think it looks cool. Like, it's a really cool design. It's interesting. It's a cool way of showing it. Um, but let's have a look at some other things. Obviously, uh, Greta Thunberg um, had had it on her handbook on ways to change the world. Um, what else we got here? Tartan t-shirts feature the climate stripes created by Prickly Thistle in 2022. So there's a lot of clothing in that. I've seen um, like news anchors um, wear like scarves with it and things like that. Um, here we go. Uh, Wes uh, Hohenstein, the chief meteorologist at US station WNCN. Um, so it's actually used, you know, just frankly showing it to people, putting it on screen. It's just, it's a really engaging way of, of showing it. Uh, but check this stuff out. Glass artist Catherine Schilling created a mosaic and several vessels featuring the stripes. And she toured with them. Uh, what else we got here? They were used for interactive lights, uh, light shows in Copenhagen and Berlin. How about buses? Reading buses that were... Um, they were gas-powered uh, Reading buses. Um, and I think uh, a food delivery truck used it. Yeah, Tesla car, an all-terrain bike. Um, and absolutely. Absolutely, uh, Kirsty. Um, and stuff like this on the bridge, the uh, Sachsen Bridge in uh, Leipzig um, through crowdfunding. It was actually painted fashion shows. It's um, and then this is one of my favorite Reading Football Club. They actually had the stripes on their kit and there was actually a clip uh, on uh Ed Hawkin, who is the professor uh, from, I think, Sky Sports. You know, I wouldn't be able to play it on the channel. I'd get taken down. But the uh, commentators actually talked about, you know, while commenting the football match, about what these stripes mean on their arms. And so, you know, look, on the one hand, you know, I'm a, a huge... Um, um, I'm, I'm someone who's hugely concerned about um, climate change. Um and I'm someone who's always willing to discuss the issues and actually come to some kind of compromise with people where if there are people that are really against the idea of like climate change being real, 
I can still make the case why you should care about the solutions because renewable energy means cheaper energy. Um, it means we can become more independent uh, producing our own energy. Um, but it also means that we have cleaner air and people like that, you know. Um, so there's lots and lots of examples um, that you can give um, for that. And for this conversation today, I just wanted to flag it up, not only because it's Show Your Stripes Day, but also it's really good at showing how, you know, the arts and culture and science can interact in brilliant, brilliant ways. And I think that this is great. And there's even another one um, that I've not actually checked out yet. So feel free to uh, check out after the show and let me know your thoughts. There's one called Biodiversity Stripes, um, which is, um, let's have a look here. So this shows you with birds. Oh, you can just do global or with birds. So, um, yeah, you can do your area and see how biodiversity has um, has changed. So this is from the University of Derby in the UK. So I like this. I like this as a concept because what it means is you can look at the global picture, but then also you can look at something closer to home and you can literally, oh, they've got UK moths. That's interesting. <laughs> the stripes puzzle you've given us is fiendish. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah, it is. It's a it's a pretty tricky one. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely give this a go. Um, super, super cool. And uh, there are lots of ways that you can support the work as well, all through it, um, which is great. And then there are other uh, like Climate Central actually looked at. Um, global warming when each generation begins so it actually looks here at oh is it gonna let me do that I didn't know some of the names of these the greatest the silent generation baby boomers gen x millennials gen z gen alpha and it talks about I find this absolutely fascinating because I'm a millennial I was born in 87 that is just when you start getting these heat peaks um but yeah really 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 interesting and then um houston warming over a lifetime and it says if carbon pollution is cut so you've got the pre 2022 levels here and then the future um so yeah there's lots of really great ways that this this information um can be used um, so yeah, I just think it's super, super interesting and, uh, hell yeah, go us 87s. Uh, yeah, you're a, you're a millennial if you're born in 89. Absolutely. Uh, really interesting for a colorblind people. Do you know what? I, I'm sure that there must be something they've done for, a, for colorblind. There must be a version, right? There must be a version. Uh, club 87. There we go. I love this. Um, <laughs> I love this. Pesky millennials, Gen X rules. We all rule. I know people from all generations that are awesome. Um, and and, and, that, and that's the reality. Um, right. Um, what else do I have on my notes? Um, God, I've gone through this a lot quicker than I thought. Um, yeah. Wow. I, do you know what? I thought, I thought this was going to take way longer, but I've literally gone through it super, super quick. And... I, you know what? I think it is just the fact that it is so self, it is so self-explanatory. Um, I mean, look, the other thing I could do actually on this is just look at the FAQ. Um, so why are there no numbers on the graphics? They say the graphics are specifically designed to be as simple as possible and to start conversations about warm, a warming world and the risks of climate change. There are numerous other sources of information which provide more specific details about how temperatures have changed. So these graphics fill a gap and enable communication with minimal scientific knowledge required to understand their meaning. There are four different versions of the graphics available for each, which we've gone through. Uh, what can you do with the graphics? These graphics have a uh, CC, Creative Commons BY 4.0 license that can be used for any purpose as long as credit is given to Professor Ed Hawkins, University of Reading, and a link is provided to this website. Um, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. Um, Ed Hawkins, let's have it. Has he got his uh, Twitter? 
But yeah, this is this is Ed Hawkins. I've been trying to get him on my show for quite a while, but he is a very, very busy person. Um, if I do contact, has he got his Twitter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, but yeah, I just think it's really, really great. And um, actually, do you know what? If I go on Twitter, um. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is great. So where can you see large versions of the warming stripes today? Uh, so Reading UK around town tonight. London, Tate Modern, 11 p.m. tonight. New York, Times Square on the Paramount screens. Uh, across the USA, list below for tonight. So actually, there are... Here we go. So um, is that the full list? Yeah. Is this near anyone? Is there anyone in the chat that is near any of these? Um, so yeah, there's, there's 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 quite a lot, but this I love, um, which I will find here on his actual page. Um, here we go. The White Cliffs of Dover have been lit up with it, which is amazing. So that that you got that there, and then start a conversation about climate change. I think it's awesome. Super, super awesome. And look, it's a great campaign. Just love it. I love how creative people are. People like making outfits, scarves. I just think it's a super, super simple. But simple are the, the most effective ways of doing it. Um, to Mark, show your stripes. Mr. F Fernandez, year nine class have been helping to display a graphic of the iconic warning stripes in the biology corridor. They've also been creating their own short films to raise awareness. Um, it's amazing. So, yeah. Oh, they've also done it for the Atlantic Ocean. Oh. It is, it is pretty concerning. It's pretty concerning. But there we have it, everyone. Um, so, yeah, um, all the links are in the description. Uh, showyourstripes.info. Give it a go. Um, and it's just a really cool way of starting a conversation. And although it is Show Your Stripes Day, it felt right to talk about it here and now. Um, but um, the truth is, it can be done anytime, anytime indeed. Uh, and I'm just having a look at the puzzle. Look at this. You've been smashing it. I mean, this one is evil, isn't it? Because it is just straight lines. So you have to sort of go go your way up. Um, <laughs> this, because I think you pretty much got it. It's just you're literally having to go up and down. So if you haven't already, head on over uh, and help out because there are 174. <laughs> I forgot how bad it was going to be going that way. That is pretty evil. I, I do, I do, I do apologise. That is pretty, pretty cruel. Um, all right. Well, with that said, um, I don't want to like over egg the topic. Um, we can just uh, chill and chat uh, and take any questions or any topics people want to talk about uh, for the remainder of the time. Um, I'm just having a look on my phone to see if I've actually got. Um, something to show on my phone from the event I've been at today um, mm, 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 mm. there are so many horror games coming out that I'm really not looking forward to oh by the way I um I invested uh, I pre-ordered the upcoming spider-man 2 game uh, but I got the special edition which is this and you get a 19 inch venom statue some of you that that won't mean much to but this statue here uh with both not spider-men but spider-man's miles morales and peter parker um yeah that will look really really good in the background right around there somewhere so i'm really excited for that um i reckon the next puzzle should be diagonal stripes gives everyone a better chance we won't be doing stripes again <laughs> we won't be doing stripes again um that is for sure um Just having a look at the chat, having a look at the chat. 
Uh, Mojo says, um, what can the average person do to help with climate change battle? The honest truth is there are so many of us that are really engaged in politics um, or, you know, like to tweet about it and stuff like that. But the way that change is really... But we're all kind of waiting for that moment to, like, show up on a protest or stuff like that. But the truth is it's the slow and boring stuff that makes the you know the greatest change and so it's running for office or supporting people at your local council levels like at the grassroots that is how we make change and I've got to be completely honest like that's me even speaking to myself about that you know I I like to talk about stuff on here but I do need to you know maybe be more active in my local community and things like that Um, but you know what the average person can do is just having a conversation like you know, sh- sharing your stripes on Facebook and then others might have a conversation going, oh, what is that? Like, what does that mean? Um, and then you can explain it, you know. It's got an FAQ there. It's got all the information. Because the truth is, talking about this isn't about going, and climate change is a massive issue, so do something about it now. That's not what it's about. Like, literally today I wanted to talk about how cool this is as an idea of bringing science and the arts together. And, you know, a week or two from now, someone in the chat might have watched it and gone... You know, and then come across something that is to do with climate change and is, you know, more open to, you know, getting involved in it. Like, it's all about planting the seeds and um, being mindful of the challenges we have because um, climate, um, is it called climate anxiety? It's something I used to experience quite a lot um, where I really worry about the state of the world and how we are in serious, serious trouble. Um, But yeah, um, the thing is, We've got brilliant scientists. We've got brilliant engineers working on great technology. We've got all sorts. Um, so uh, we should all stick together on that. Um, Kirsty says we need to talk Dead by Daylight. Does anyone here play Dead by Daylight? Um, Dead by Daylight is a game that I've always thought um, needs to come to VR. Um, it's a game where it's um, it's an a- asymmetric multiplayer. So I believe you have, is it three or four survivors? And you have one person that's the monster. And they have like famous monsters from all the, the movies and that. And if you're a survivor, you have to fix like three... Uh, like you have to fix generators. And once you fix them all, you can then get to the exit and escape. And it's really, really good fun. But like fixing the generators in VR would be amazing. Because as you're doing it, you keep looking over your shoulder. Uh, and it does have some pretty jumpy moments. But you can play as the monster as well uh and and mess people up a lot um doesn't the climate change periodic uh change periodically naturally we might be overreacting so the truth is uh climate does change over time uh there are cycles on the planet um but the the rate of change um at the moment is like unbelievably quick um and so, yeah, so it's like both both can be true, right, Roy? So it's like, yeah, climate does change naturally. However, things are accelerating. And so when you do look at, I'm using the puzzle here, you look at all this blue and then you see the red. You know, that is a trend. And you always hear about like these 100-year floods, these floods that happen once in 100 years and it happens like every year. Or, you know, we've beaten records on temperature but it's not just about getting hot. Sometimes you get incredibly cold weather. And it's because um, global warming has an impact on all of our systems. Like I was talking about how in the in the UK, like we have days and days without any rain. And then it does rain, but it rains super quickly all at once, which causes flooding. Um, so it causes more extreme weather patterns. Um, but I definitely want to get a, a climologist on... Um, to, to, to talk about things um i would love to have uh solar panels on my roof but i believe it's too small for that but this is what i say and and again this is i've had a few friends recently come up to me and talk about how they used to watch my activist videos and they were really they like my approach which is i am about sort of you know finding common ground and that doesn't mean like going halfway on the issues it's just finding out where there's where there's agreement uh, and, and ways of working together and as I mentioned earlier let's just say you're someone who doesn't believe climate change is real believes there's nothing to worry about 
well, let's just fight for better technology. Yeah. Like, gas for fuel. Like, I, I just remember, like, 15 years ago, I'd hear all the petrol heads. What's, what's, what do you call it in America? Because petrol heads is what is, um, for people that are obsessed with cars, but I know you call it gas, not petrol, even though it's petroleum. Um, but it's this idea of like, oh, electric cars, they're so inefficient. And then I watched this interview with this like racer who had an electric bike, motorbike, and it looked cool. And he was just, he was basically saying, when you turn the ignition in a in a combustion engine, it has to burn the fuel, create heat, you know, go through the combustion engine, and then that turns into kinetic energy to get you going. He says with an, an electric vehicle bike you say go and the, the energy the electric energy is there it just works instantly and it's why i don't know if you've ever seen those videos of like teslas and people that go into the speed mode and they just accelerate and you see people in their chairs going like that and it's like super quiet as well um it's amazing like it's super cool um and so yeah i always say like we want great technology and also we want stuff that like forget like the climate crisis we are eventually going to run out of oil but we're never going to run out of sunshine yeah um and sunshine is infinite and if we harness it and capture it then we can have infinite energy but i'll tell you what i'd love to get my dad on sometime to talk because my dad's got solar panels on his house and whenever there's excess energy so like when we're on vacation and it's running at home and like you're not using electricity you can use it to like heat the um, the boiler, uh, so you're storing the energy in like the water by heating it up. But you can also feed it back into the grid, yeah, and sell it back to them. But they give you they give you barely any cash for the energy that you generate, and then they'll sell it to someone else for loads. And I think it's criminal, like many things happening in the world at the moment. Like we have interest rates through the roof. Um, which means that if you borrow from the banks, you um, pay more interest. You have to pay more money back. But then when you save money, you're not getting those same interest rates. They're staying where they were, which is punishing savers. That needs to um, that needs to, to, to be fixed. Um, Amnesia Pete says, I feel you, Miles. I'm always stressing what, we, what we're doing to the world, uh, probably because of my son and his future. Yeah, I mean, look, there are lots of trends you see. You see that, like, less and less people having kids or, or delaying having kids. Um, uh, you have people just anxious for their kids. Um, but, like, politicians that have kids... I, I mean, look, sorry, I'm just jumping around here. When I worked for a big media company, we used to have Monday, uh, like, morning meetings. And we'd have off-the-record conversations with politicians and famous people and people from industry and we had someone come in who was like i think he was the ceo or he was like super senior of um a big oil company and he was like you know we're always going to need fossil fuels but he did also mention that every morning at the breakfast table his kids are asking him about climate change and i've noticed in the last five to ten years because of how educated young people are becoming because of the internet they're now holding their parents and the adults in society more accountable because adults are no longer like the gatekeepers of information uh, and I find that's a really interesting tipping point um, so yeah look the only thing we can do is have conversations um, and it's about bringing people on side and when you see good initiatives embrace it I mean I'll give you a really really short example I am um, this week or last week uh, I, I was getting some ads um, for this on Instagram. And, and by the way, I'm not sponsored by them. Like, I'm just talking about it because I think this is awesome. So you, um, in the UK, you get like these Brita filters, which are like, they look like this, but you get a little capsule, which they'll show you in a minute, this. But what you do is it filters the water, but then once you're done with it, you throw the capsule away and you just, it's all this plastic now I needed a new one, so I actually bought, I bought this middle one, I bought the, the 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 jug, and then what you do is you can you know buy these um, cartridges for your existing filter, 
but here it has like this circular one and you just fill it and all you do is you buy through the the pouch these um this powder that you put in and it, it can be used for 45 days or i can't remember i think it's like 200 liters of water you can process through it um and then when you order it it comes through like recyclable uh packs that come through your letterbox and it's just so much better so much better um and so like you know when they say like you know vote with your wallet like i try and in, I, i'm not perfect i'm not perfect when it comes to stuff but none of us are perfect and it's not about shaming people that do get stuff wrong it's about giving people options and so for here um so the paper here we go i love this so the paper is made out of eco rice paper uh, general waste carbon felt wood pulp cardboard boxes recyclable and filtration contents is mixed materials and general general waste so i love that and it comes through i love that through the letterbox wow that person's ordered a lot haven't they and uh do you know what i might should i try and get scott dixon on the show the founder i'll see if i can get him on the idea of fox came about in 2016 when Scott had been searching to cure his acid reflux symptoms. Research showed that alkaline water had the potential to be a temporary fix. The success of drinking healthier water led Scott to pursue what has now become Fox Water. So, um, yeah. Oh, um, Kiara Thring, she's the social media marketing intern. So I might contact her and then find out if we can get Scott on the show. Um, but these are the people that I want to have conversations with. Like, I want to, you know talk about interesting products and uh you know easy ways of just like voting with your wallet um there was a meme i remember i saw ages ago um let me see if i can find it it was about water companies Is this it? This is it. Yeah, this is it. I love this. I love this so much. Bottled water companies do not produce water. They produce plastic bottles. I love this. I love this a lot. Simple message, and it's so true. I often look at the amount of plastic bottles I've got from, like, when I get meal deals and stuff like that. Yeah, you recycle it, but recycling means it gets taken away. You've just eaten a meal, which got delivered to the you know, to the supermarket. It's now getting taken to a recycling plant. You know, it's just such a waste. Such a waste. Um, but yeah, right. Uh, 25 watching and only five likes. We've got more than five likes now. Uh, but do hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, and yes, as Kirsty says, our winters will get very cold. Absolutely. Have you ever measured your personal eco footprint? I've never. Um, is there a way of doing that that you'd recommend? Um, wouldn't it be a shame if we made the world a better place for no good reason? That is that is one of my favourite memes. I, I remember that. Uh, what was it? Let's see if I can find that as well. What if we made the world better for nothing? This is it. This This is the meme. I love this. These are great. <laughs> Energy independence, preserve rainforest, sustainability, green jobs, livable cities, renewables, clean water, air, healthy children, etc. What if it's a big hoax and we create a, be a better world for nothing? Now, there is a big portion of people that believe climate change is a hoax and their reason is that it's just a tax scam. This is another example where both could be right. Climate change is real, but it is being used as a tax scam. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is governments go, yeah, we need to raise taxes for this, but then they waste the money on other stuff. Yeah? I want accountability. Like, all this money is just getting used. Um, wow, you had 26 panels installed on your building. That's amazing. Um... Uh, wow, you got a Nissan Leaf. That's cool. That's cool. 
Uh, find out from your energy supplier if you can invest in something like Ripple. They build solar and wind farms, sort of crowdfunding. That's cool. Ripple. Okay, this is good. I like this. See, this is an example of why Show Your Stripes Day is awesome because it's not specifically about what comes directly from that. By us talking about it, we're now having this conversation and I'm learning about stuff like Ripple. Great. That's something else I'm going to have to look up. Uh, unlimited sunshine until the clouds cover everything, like in those dark futuristic stories, yeah. Um, but then that's why you... And I, I, I know that you know this, but for anyone that you know does go, oh, yeah, good point. Um, that's why you diversify. You know, you have tidal energy, you have wind energy, you have all of it. Um, Joshua says, we have a very progressive solar industry in Washington State. My store is a great big grocery store looking at a $2 million... $2 million for the upgrade. Wow. Um, you heard in Switzerland there is a negative interest on savings. Wow. So you lose money from saving. Is that right? Let's have a look. Um, so the... Sweet, uh, Switzerland National Bank first imposed a negative rate of minus 0.75% in uh, 2019, uh, 2015, when it was forced to abandon a policy of defending the Swiss franc. Negative rates have been featured since then with the global economy going through a rocky period. So they're very unconventional and seemingly counterintuitive monetary policy tool. With negative interest rates, cash deposited at the bank yields a storage charge rather than the opportunity to interest income. The idea is to incentivize loaning and spending rather than saving and hoarding. That's super interesting. That is super interesting. Um, before my disability pension, I was working with windmills around Europe. That's super cool. Um, let's have a look here. In my province, we pay 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. So I try and do my laundry then. That's the other thing as well is like depending on, you know, when you use your energy, that can be a big thing. I mean, something that's been huge in the UK, tell me about anywhere else in the world. Everyone goes on about air fryers. Air fryers. Everyone was talking about how good they are and they are amazing. My parents have given me one. I haven't like, used it yet because i want to like look at the instructions uh but you know normally you turn an oven on and you're heating this massive oven whereas an air fryer you just heat the little area that you need for your food um and you save a lot of money on it you save a lot of money on it um i always try to reuse plastic bottles as long as i can well do you know what let me just show you something um actually you know what i will show you it after the uh after the credits here we go footprint calculator Thank you, Callie. That's good. Um, oh, and the puzzle has been done. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm not calling you a liar, but it's, it's good to have a look. There we go, everyone. There we go. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. That was that was probably one of the, the harshest ones to do. So um, huge, huge love to you all. Well done. Just in the nick of time. Well done, Looper and Co. Well done. Well done, everyone. Um, yeah. Well done, well done. Right, I'm just catching up with the... Yeah, nifty. Nifty things, right? And you've been using an Instapot. Instapot. Uh, Christian says, they're great. They're like a teeny tiny convection oven. It saves energy and keeps your house from getting too toasty. Yeah, especially especially in the uh, in the summer. Um, I, I am worrying about doing my VR streams when uh, things get super hot. But, you know, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. But anyway... Uh, uh, Anyway, everyone, um, I want to say a huge thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this show. Please do like uh, on your way out. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell to be notified about all future live shows that I do every week. Lots happening at the weekends that have been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, can you send a trailer to play... Can you send you a trailer to PlayStation Tetris Effect? What is the question? Do you want... A trailer to PlayStation's Tetris Effect. Someone else, or oh, you can, you can. Um, I've got, I've got the trailer. I think. 
Um, you're going to be getting an air fryer soon. Okay. It's good. This is good. This is good. Uh, and Yellow Mobile. Oh, I turned up. I'm sure it was great. So I hit like just now. Well, that's cool. You can always watch it on replay. Uh, and if you are watching it on replay, do let me know in the comments below. What would you like to see on episode 100 of Miles Dyer Live? Um, I am Sony believes no one has a monopoly on good ideas. I'm pretty exhausted at the moment, so I'm going to be pretty terrible with ideas. But I've already made made a start uh, with things that will make me suffer. So there is that. Um, finally, I just want to say, um, you know, I, I, I do obviously get gifted things by companies, um, but I am making a concerted effort not to take sponsorship. Um, ads are run on the channel occasionally, um, but um, I'm, I'm funded by membership. So if you can spare as little as the pro as, a, as a price, if you can spare as little, I can't speak today. If you can spare as little as the cost of a price of coffee, uh, once a month, uh, click the join button and become a member. You unlock all these awesome emojis uh, and you also uh, get a nice little badge next to your name and it helps me out a lot. Um, we might have to do a drive, a membership drive uh, next week uh, for the 100th episode. Um, but yeah, on that note, I want to say I hope you'll have a wonderful week. Check out Show Your Stripes. Um, why not post them in the Discord or tweet me with them? Uh, and yeah, um, I have something that I am going to show you, but I'm going to go grab it while the credits are rolling. So on that note, have a wonderful week. I will see you on Friday. Love, respect, empathy, and adios. Till next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Much love. I'm so sorry I totally messed that up. <laughs> I was going to do the credits. I was going to do the credits. And then uh, I clicked a button and now I'm back. And the, do, do, we, do, do we finish the credits? Yeah, you've got you've got a lot to say. We'll, we'll do the credits again. I'm credit, we'll do the credits again, all right? I can't even skip the song. We're going to have to do it from the beginning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. So, yeah, let me know your final thoughts and I'll feature them. <laughs> See you after the credits.
do you know this it, it sums up perfectly how exhausted i am because for those of you that joined the live stream right at the very beginning will notice that i didn't play the countdown it went to this And I was like, oh, why have I done that? And so I waited for the music to die down. Then I switched to the countdown with the timer at the right time. Basically, I was trying to press the button that hides the comments. Because basically, like, if I do this, like Mojo said, a nice comment there. If I then click to put someone else's comment on, like Karina's, it will replace it like that. So Mojo's will disappear. And then another one pops up. Whereas if I press hide, it goes down. And then... It comes up and down. Well, that didn't do that time. I don't know. Um, so I went to press it and I pressed the host button and it did it. Um, everyone's telling me to go to sleep. I will go to sleep, but first, and I'm sorry, Karina, the uh, timestamps are going to be an absolute nightmare today. Um, so this is what I was mentioning. Uh, we we're talking about like water bottles. I bought this and it's actually got like, I kid you not, it's got like a Bluetooth connection on the bottom of it. Uh, it's called Ocean Bottle, and basically, um, if I connect to it, it will tell me where the bottle is actually made. Let me um, let me see if I can find it now. Uh, this is what this is what I got. I asked for it for Christmas. So, um, oh wow, this is a terrible website. This bottle stops the equivalent of a thousand plastic bottles from entering the ocean. So this is what they do is, um, oh, this is to celebrate a little mermaid. That's cool. Um, no, I just want to find out the impact. Aitkin, so um, I know you asked about Tetris Effect. So I have actually got Tetris Effect planned for a future live stream. It's not going to be this weekend, but it will be one soon. So so don't you worry about it. I'm going to be playing every PSVR 2 game at some point. Um, so if I do tell me more how it works. So here's how you become a part of the solution to the ocean plastic crisis and support the livelihoods of people living on the front lines of the ocean plastic crisis. Um, so... Um, with the sale of every ocean bottle, we fund the collection of 11.4 kilograms of plastic equivalent to 1,000 plastic bottles. So when you buy one, 1,000 plastic bottles are, cle are, are, are cleaned up. Rivers and waterways. Plastic collectors collect uh, plastic in rivers and coastal waterways before it enters the ocean. Social mobility. They exchange plastic for money and get to access social resources such as healthcare, tuition and financial support. Ocean-bound plastic is collected up, uh, upcycled or co-processed sustainably into new products. Uh, refill to recycle revolution. More plastic is collected every time you, you refill with the help of the Ocean Bottle app. Um, so, um, interesting. So, I'll have to have a look at the app. I haven't actually used the app yet. Um, but it's super cool. Like, there's really interesting incentives and things like that so um yeah definitely uh check it out oceanbottle.co i'll put the link in the chat here um all right everyone i am going to get some sleep um but i love you all i will see you in discord at some point um and we will start doing some like voice chat meetups in discord and, and some actual multiplayer get togethers um but as i said it's just been a busy eight weeks but you've been very understanding and i really appreciate you for it um lots of great stuff coming just around the corner though. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Much love.